Hi guys, this is Turnit John's Furniture Repair. I'm starting a new project in the shop today. And it's this guy. He's in pretty rough shape. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful piece, but someone has tried to do some repairs to lifting veneer uh, and shoved a lot of putty in areas um, probably where there was missing veneer and uh, chips and dents and things. So it's in pretty bad shape and uh, I'll show you a little closer up, but basically we're gonna be stripping the whole thing down, doing all the repairs to the, the surface and uh, fixing the drawers, they don't work very well. Looks like, you know, maybe there was some pieces of veneer missing and someone just kind of slathered some uh, putty in. So I'm kind of afraid of what I'm gonna find in here. Hopefully not uh, too drastic and maybe it's just an overfill or something like that. Uh, but we're gonna take everything apart get it uh, as many pieces as we can and start stripping it down. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so I've got everything out of the dresser. Everything's in pretty bad shape. So I've got a rag here with some water and I wanna do some investigating on these to see what the heck this is. So I'm just gonna spray it with my, this looks like water-based timbermate or something. Let's see if I can just wipe it off. Just want to see what we're working with underneath here before I... Okay. Major over puttying, looks like. I think he was trying to deal with um, finish, missing finish. Maybe he was thinking of painting this and just doing a cleanup that way, which if that's all he's doing, then I don't care. You know, it's not gonna be a big deal. We're gonna be stripping this finish off anyways. So that's good. What I don't want is putty under finish or under veneer, I mean, where I have to re-glue veneer and there's putty everywhere. But we've got, you know, lifting veneer here. And I just don't want putty under. It might be a bit of an issue here where he's puttied over loose veneer. So to do that repair, we have to clean that out of there. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. But for the most part, I don't think he's done that. I think it's just surface imperfections that are being puttied here. So I think we're good to uh, just strip it off and let the putty come off with the stripping process. And if not, sand it. So most... All right, guys, so this area here, I can see that there's lifting veneer with putty everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is soak this down and I'm gonna start scrubbing that off. I usually like to do my veneer repairs before I strip. And I can't do that if this is all over the place. So I gotta get this off and see what's going on. <laughs> Looks like there's putty right underneath this veneer piece here too. I'm just gonna kind of gently scrub under there. Okay, so I'm just gonna look underneath this piece. I'm gonna get a little scraper, my little knife to remove bit of a chunk that's underneath there. Anything that's stopping it from laying down flat needs to be removed. Or I could just break it off and do it that way. So much for being careful. Okay, so looks like I've got it all. Just gonna get a bit of eye glue here. 
This is just some old brown glue, hide glue that I've needed to open up the bottle for, so I'll just put it in a jar. And I'll just get that everywhere, work it into these areas. And I'm gonna check the surrounding veneer. Looks like it's loose here as well. So at the same time, I'll do that. Make sure that's clean. And then work some glue in there as well. And I'll just kind of use my finger to push it right into the back of where that veneer is loose and kind of use hydraulic pressure. We'll wipe off the excess. And there will still need to be some repairs to this area, but at least I've got all the veneer down that was there. Okay, now we'll just put our wood block there with tape so it doesn't stick to the wood and throw a couple clamps on it overnight. is taken care of yeah again just some dents on the front of this face looks like um, more you know imperfections there is a lifted area veneer right here right in the middle of the panel looks like it's got some putty in it so what I'm gonna do is slice it open Try to clean out as much stuff as I can. I'm gonna lose some, I think I'm gonna make a new piece to go in here. I'm just gonna lose this here and we'll replace that I'm cutting it at a kind of a triangle shape so that when I put my patch in it's not like a square kind of blends in a little bit better if you use that shape for repairs. So I'm using rawhide glue to do these uh, veneer repairs because that's the glue that's in here already. And also rawhide glue is just the easiest glue to use for veneer repairs. You know, if you're lining up a little veneer piece and it doesn't quite work for you, you just wet it and you can reposition it. It doesn't need to be a disaster. Like with some other glues, you would have to just destroy the piece and try again. So it's always nice to be a little bit flexible when you're doing veneer repairs. Okay, so I'll need to cut a piece for that. Okay, so I've got a piece of mahogany here, and I'm pretty sure this is walnut. I'm not 100% sure, but this straight grain part of this mahogany piece um, works pretty good for this area. 
And because we're going so dark, um, I didn't have a nice piece of walnut that would have worked here. I mean, I might in. Sometimes I have some things in here that I can save. And it almost looks a little bit more like something like that, but this is just old mahogany. Um, this is a piece of walnut. I don't think it looks right. I think this is gonna be my best bet for color matching. I don't always replace um, with the same wood. And if you wanna scream at me, that's okay. If it was really in a prominent area and the finish wasn't gonna be super dark and I needed to make sure that it was the same wood, then of course I would do that. But this is a small repair. This is gonna blend in just fine with the quiet green, so. All right, so what I'm gonna do is that I've got my little void all cut out and cleaned. I'm gonna take a piece of paper and a pencil and I'm just going to, um, do like we used to do in kindergarten is a rubbing. Could have done that in the middle actually. Let me just do that again. Good, so that gives me an idea of the shape. So I'm just gonna cut this out and I'm just gonna glue it on to my piece of veneer uh, after I fit it in here with a little bit of rawhide glue. So let me cut this off. All right, so I've got my piece. Now I'm just gonna see how it actually fits in here. I'm gonna kind of press it into everywhere and see where it needs to be trimmed a little bit. I'm going to press it in with my knife. All right guys, so I've got uh, the bottom drawer apart that was in pretty bad shape and had all the blue tape on it. And uh, we can see why. So these super deep grooves that are usually just grooves on this drawer front, they've gone all the way through, or drawer bottom, have gone all the way through. And I'll show you the culprits. And I hate these types of drawer stops. You've probably seen them before. These are drawer bottom eaters right here. And when your drawer wears out, it gets lower and lower and lower riding on the sides here. And once it gets low enough, when these start contacting, this just starts scooping out wood on the bottom of the drawer. And soon you have pretty deep grooves. And in this drawer's case, holes. So we're gonna replace this. And uh, the second thing we have to do to repair that is repair the runners. So these guys here, are worn down along the edge that it rides inside the cabinet with. So you can see how wide it is here. And then when you look here, you can see how thin it is. So that's all worn down over time. So what we have to do is glue and uh, strip on of wood back onto these and uh, resaw them in the table saw to get them back up to height so they won't touch those drawer slides. But the other, or drawer stops, but the other thing is uh, we're gonna take those out of there 
and use wooden blocks to stop the drawer instead of metal, just because that will never happen again with those. So there are other repairs on this drawer. Obviously this is broken and uh, we're gonna get a new drawer bottom made because that's not going back in. And uh, then we'll just re-glue the whole thing and uh, get it fixed. I'll show you how I do the runners before we put it back together and that'll be fixed. Okay, so I've got these drawer sides for that bottom drawer that was all full of blue tape, all glued up. There's a couple cracks. So uh, I've decided after some measuring that this needs to be eight and seven eighths wide. So uh, what I need to do first is run them through the table saw to get a straight edge on the glide area. And then I can laminate on a piece of hardwood uh, to, and then probably put them through again to make them exactly eight and seven eighths. So let's get them to the table saw and run them through first. Okay, so we've got our chunky pieces that we can just glue right onto the bottom and they'll get shaved and shaped afterwards. So I'll grab my carpenter's glue, which is the best glue to use when you can laminate two flat pieces of wood together. You wouldn't want a gap filling glue here or an expandable glue like PVA glue. Just wanna go with straight up carpenter's glue. All right, so I'm not gonna be too picky about it. I'm just gonna get it on there. Put a couple of clamps on it. Good, so that can sit for a couple hours and then we can cut it off and shape it. We were lucky that we kept uh, all of our dovetails when we had to saw that off. It wasn't too serious that we lost them all. So uh, those we don't need to cut back in, just the glide. Okay, so I'm just working on the cabinet of the dresser here, the case. And you can see that these interior drawer slides are in pretty bad shape. There's pieces missing, broken off. Uh, this side is broken off, the side's just worn off. And these are actually really stuck in here. None of them are loose and uh, the joinery is all still really tight. So I'm trying to figure out a way to repair this without removing them from the interior of the cabinet because it's gonna cause a lot of damage. And I'm thinking uh, what I wanted to do was uh, take them to the table saw, run them through and put a new spline into these pieces, um, but I can't get them out. So I'm thinking of, you know, maybe just getting uh, a chisel and working a groove in here, doing a couple of drill points, chiseling out a section, and then just uh, adding in a, a tenon into the pieces that are missing. Uh, that'll work great for these little ones, but like when the, I have almost the entire piece missing on this one here, as well as the top one on this side is pretty worn and missing as well. Um, I don't want to really do that to the whole thing. That's going to take quite a long time and not a great method. So I'm trying to figure out... You know, I might try to get some heat on the corner blocks and the joints and see if I can get at least those uh, really worn ones out. If not, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to, uh, you know, either get a router or something. It's gonna be pretty tough though because working inside the cabinet, you don't have a lot of space and freedom to do things like that. So I'm gonna uh, see if I can get this loose. That's the first thing I'm gonna try. All right, I've got one out. Just put a little bit of heat on the corner blocks because they're definitely what's holding it in. And they uh, did pop out of the side of the cabinet. So it's not really glued at the front or 
a little bit of glue, I guess. But mostly it's this joint that was holding it there. So I'm glad I got that out. Now I can actually run this whole thing in the table saw and uh, put a whole new tenon in there or just make a new one. I mean, that might just be as easy. So I'm gonna try to get the other side out because that one's still stuck in there. Okay, so I've got my spline cut here. I actually it's a piece of maple and that fits nicely in there. So the other thing you wanna check before is just how it's gonna slide in the drawer groove. So you can see that slides quite nicely and freely through that groove. So that's working. So now I'll just mix up some glue. So it's a little bit loose in there. I might just actually put a little piece of veneer in either side and use white glue to glue this in. I'm thinking that would probably do it because it is a little bit loose. Okay, so now that we've got the two top runners dealt with, this one's fine, so I'm gonna leave it alone, uh, but this one's missing a chunk. So what I'm gonna do is uh, actually cut this off and uh, groove this back into here. So what I'm gonna do here first is pop this at an angle like that. So now I want to make a groove in here, so I'm going to cut along the line where the tenon should be going in. And I would love to use the table saw to do this, but getting these out is a real pain, but good. And then I'm going to get my chisel starting coming back this way. And just work it out of there. a little deeper okay so I've got kind of like a groove with the ramp up I want to um, have this piece kind of lay over this braked or broken area so that we can fan it out and it doesn't get caught on just a, a flat butt joint. So I'm going to cut this off. Yeah, that should do it. So it's kind of just got a, a joint that comes that way. So I'm going to glue that in first. And then I'm going to take my plane and cut it down um, just so I can get it really meet up, met up well with the rest of the runner. But yeah, that looks good. So I'll mix some epoxy to do all of these glue ups with, I think. Even though that's a pretty good fit, um, just wanna make sure it's strong because, I mean, although the rest of this tenon is in good shape and part of this board, this one's gonna be relying just on, you know, a quarter inch in on each side of this tenon. So a good glue would be excellent here. Um, so I've just got one more of those types of repairs on this side. So I'll do the same thing here. Um, you know, chisel this away at an angle, make a groove and put my 
other little angled piece in here. And uh, yeah, then the other one down here is good. So uh, it'll that'll be good for repairs on these runners. And I can just put these back in when they're dry. So I'll get to getting this one and then get everything in epoxy. Okay, so I've got everything in clamps. I made sure to clean up the glue really well so I don't have to deal with that in the way of the sl uh, slides. So those will sit overnight. And then these two, I also cleaned up really good and they're all glued in there. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So let those sit overnight. Now I'm going to get this drawer back together. We made a new bottom. This is the drawer face. It's all prepped and ready to go. Just put that over there. And this is the new bottom that we made to replace this one with the big holes in it. So that'll work much better. And uh, we've got our drawers uh, sides here with the new glides on the bottom that we need to saw to width. So these should be ready to come out of clamps now. So let's take them out. Okay, so we've got them out of clamps here on the workbench. Here they are all glued up. So there's a little bit of a proudness on this side and this is the side that rides against the glide inside. So what I'm gonna do first before we go to the table saw is just flatten this off with the plane. So I'm just gonna use a hand plane. Duller than my jokes. So now what I'm going to do is set my table saw up to eight and seven eighths, which is what we want the width to be on these guys. So it's going to ride in the cabinet and I want this distance to be eight and seven eighths. Okay, so I've got everything prepped. Let's glue this drawer together. Just going to use some tight bond. Try to keep it all contained in these dovetails. Okay, so got those two free. We'll need a little bit of cleanup and I'm gonna do a slight chamfer on the edge so it's not sharp and cutting into the, the drawer side. 
just to make it a nice soft piece. There's a little bit of glue squeeze out here that I didn't clean up. I tried to clean up most of it, but I'll get that. And then on the cabinet here, we've got these two repairs that we did. So I'll get these off. That looks pretty good. Nice and sturdy in there. That's gonna be awesome. So I'll just need to do some uh, work with the planer and the chisels to get those to come back to shape. And then we've got the drawer that we glued up yesterday. So let's get these clamps off. All right, so it looks pretty nice and sturdy, guys. Not uh, any side to side motion nice and sturdy got a nice new drawer bottom here so the last thing we need to do to get this guy back together is put some nails going into the back here so I'm gonna pre-drill those and put uh, just three nails across the back here Let me grab my drill make it straight All right, so we've got our drawer bottom all affixed in, and this drawer is feeling sturdy. So, does it fit? It's a good question. Our drawer slides down here are going to need a lot of work. Uh, if you can see in the cabinet here, most of them are loose, for one. One of them is out here. And uh, this one's not too, too bad, although it's not good. There are deep grooves where the drawers have been sliding and I can feel quite a bit of a dip right at the back here where it's been stopping and just grinding away. So what I'm gonna be doing with these guys is uh, probably taking all of them and flipping them over. Uh, I've done that quite often. If the wood is in good shape on this side, then I just move the blocks over and this over to this side, and then I can still keep the tenon. Now, sometimes the tenon isn't right in the middle of this piece, so that doesn't work, but this one is. So I can basically just take these runners out, flip them after getting this all cleaned up, and put them back into the groove upside down and we've got a whole new surface to run a drawer on. So easiest way to do it, I think. And I like to keep the original pieces as much as I can. Uh, even if we are moving them around, at least they're still with the dresser. So what I'm gonna do is get all of these out and flip them. But first, I just wanna see how that drawer fits. So I'm gonna pop it back in the way it was. And it's actually the bottom drawer that we're gonna fit that we fixed already. So I'm just going to see how that's looking. That's not too bad at all. I thought it would be way tighter than that. I mean, it needs drawer stops put in because it's not landing where it's supposed to, but in terms of sitting square in the opening, it's pretty good. And once we fix those slides, it'll be even better. It'll be a little bit more lifted at the back. So I might take a little bit off because it is high, quite high on this gap on the bottom, but not as bad as I thought it would be. So that's really good. I think what I'll do is take maybe a 16th off on each side of these runners um, but I'm only going to do that after I switch those around just to make sure I, I uh, have room to do that. 
So let's get these runners out. smooth surfaces for the drawer bottoms to run against. So, I gotta get these uh, guides off of this side here. This one's really deep. Look how deep that is. Can you see the groove? Goes right into there, like a quarter inch. These are worn, but not as much as the sides, but I'll flip these two so that this side is at the back and the drawer can run on this new side here. We can save as much as we can. Lord knows the cost of wood these days is just really terrible and it's good to save wherever we can. Except for that one broke. So that's okay. We'll make a new one. There. I'll just give those a little sand on the sander as well, uh, just to clean them up for the blocks. Okay, so I've got the new. Uh, guides or one new guide made here and got these uh, all ready to go. I just got to scrape off a little bit of this old glue. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top of this one because it's here already and then I'll get some glue in the back joint and the front tenon. And then I'll also get some glue on my tenon here and on the back corner. Good. And then we'll just pop that into place. Get a hammer. So then I'm going to put a uh, one of the corner blocks on underneath. Never forget these guys, they're always important to put back in place. Just wipe off some glue here. The last thing we need to figure out is where these guys go. So we know that when they're started, they need to start um, just a little bit proud of the edge of the dresser here. So you want maybe like a 16th sticking out so you're not in uh, trouble of hitting the side of the dresser. But then we need to make sure from that point it's square all the way back. Sometimes our drawer isn't square, but we're gonna start with these square. So I'm gonna get my square. 